The full-feature VFD controller includes a NEMA 4X plastic enclosure with a digital display. The membrane keypad gives you options for forward and reverse, start, stop, and a speed control. The controller includes a cord to the motor. A power cord is included only if it's a 115 VAC single-phase unit. The controller is UL listed and CE compliant options are available. Add-ons are sold separately for industrial network support. The package includes the VFD unit, mounting hardware, which will vary based on whether it's attaching to an industrial or sanitary conveyor, the Dorner operating manual and mounting manual, and the vendor operating manual. If purchased on the same order, your motor will be pre-wired to the controller. If not purchased together, you are responsible for wiring. To wire the motor, start by removing the screws from the cover. Most Dorner motors operate at either 230 or 460 three-phase. When wiring your motor, ensure that the internal wiring is set up appropriately for the VFD output. Here we have a 230 output VFD, so we will be following this delta or low voltage configuration. The wiring diagram tells us to tie W1 to V2 and V1 to U2 and U1 to W2. Next, feed your wires through the cord clamp and motor. The green ground wire goes to a grounding terminal inside the motor itself. Then we connect the three power leads to the three open terminals. If you find when powering up your motor, the motor is running in the opposite direction you want it to, you can simply swap any two of the power leads. After the power leads are set, simply cover up the terminal box and reattach the screws. Then tighten up the cord grip. This particular unit is a 115 volt single phase unit and therefore comes with a power cord. If you do not have a 115 volt single phase unit, you will have to add your own power to the unit. To access the power terminals, simply remove the four screws and take the cover off. Inside, you'll see the power leads for the motor on the left and the input power on the right. Later on, should you want to control this remotely through discrete I.O., you can use this terminal block here. We recommend you refer to the vendor manual for that process. After wiring the motor and supplying power to the controller, we need to adjust the parameters to operate the motor. The first thing we need to do is turn off the password if it's enabled. This unit flashed pass, so there is a password set. The default password from Dorner is 225. Hit M, and now we're into our parameter settings. The first parameter that will change is parameter 102. Most units are set to either 6, 10, or 25 Hz. It's motor dependent. This particular motor has a minimum frequency of operation of 10 Hz, so we'll set that for 10. The next parameter is 104, or the acceleration. This comes from Dorner set to 1 second acceleration. You can increase or decrease that number. The setting after that is 105, or the deceleration. Again, we set it to 1 second. For the next parameter, we need to make note of a few nameplate values on the motor and the VFD. On the VFD, we need the output current. That is the 4.2 amps on this unit here. On the motor, we are interested in the line of 230 volt delta configuration, as you see here that we wired earlier. We want to note the voltage, the expected hertz, the RPM, the power factor, and the full load amps, or the amp rating under full load. Parameter 108 is the motor overload setting. It's calculated by the motor full load amps divided by the VFD rated amps. We can find that information on the nameplate stickers of the motor and VFD units. In this case, we're down to 33. The next setting is parameter 111. This is set to the number 2, or in this case, we're telling it to use a ramp function and the deceleration parameter set earlier. Set parameter 302 to the motor rated voltage, which is 230 volts. Then set parameter 303 to the motor rated current, 
which is 1.4 amps. Next set parameter 304 to the motor rated frequency, which is 60 Hz. Set parameter 305 to the motor rated speed, which is 1650 RPM. Finally, parameter 306, or the power factor of the motor, again coming from the motor nameplate. In this case, it's 0.67. Now we'll go ahead and hit the start button, and we should see movement from the motor. As the motor's running, you can hold the up or down arrows to change the speeds between minimum and maximum speeds set. The full featured VFD automatically comes with forward and reverse built in. To change the direction, simply stop the motor, change your forward reverse direction, hit enter, and start back up again. Stop the motor again, change the forward reverse direction, enter, and start the motor back up. Other features of this VFD unit include the discrete I.O. control and industrial network support. We invite you to refer to the vendor manual for setup of appropriate parameters per those applications.